Hello, Brilliant Jewelry Channel. Welcome to this Matrix Gold tutorial. This is Matrix Gold 3.8, the latest version. Today, we're going to model an Eternity Band. So let's jump right in. First, I'm going to bring a three-point diamond. Now I'm going to create a profile for my shank. Something like this will be just fine. Then I'm going to indicate a size seven and create the shank for the gems. The shank is now ready. Let's quickly distribute the gems. The distribution is now complete. The prongs are in place. Let's assign them to the gems here. Obviously, don't forget to create the automatic cutters and make the cuts in the shank. Warning. So now that I've modeled Warning. this eternity loading band blender size 7, 4.3 to, to preserve your mental health. Sorry. No, wait, Warning. what's happening here? Warning. I have to use Matrix loading Gold. They told me it's the best premium jewelry stuff. Hey, wait, health. no, no, you can't do that. Warning. You can't do that. Warning. No, wait, what's happening loading here? Loading blender 4.3 to preserve your mental health. Warning. Warning. Loading blender 4.3 to preserve your mental health. Hello, 3D Jewelry Channel. Welcome to this new tutorial. Today, we're going to create a high jewelry pavé flower ring in Blender 4.3. Let's get started. I will be using colored sapphires like the ones you can see on the screen right now. So from here, I'm going to start making the petals. Okay, so let's create this petal shape. Let's make a nice grid topology. Solidify one millimeter. Bevel, subdivision, surface, three levels, material gold. But first, let me take a sapphire so I can adapt the design at once for the gems. So let's make the petal anything but flat. This is a good start. Now let's copy the petal and I'm going to keep making variations of the petals. The flower is now ready and I need to create borders. Select the outside, extrude on the Z axis, reset the normals and work on the offset. Then adjust any necessary detail. Each petal needs a border. Let's get to it. The borders are ready and it's important to check under the flower. The borders must be perfect under and on top. So don't forget to look at your design from all the angles. And now obviously you would say, oh, let's make the pavé. Well, no, obviously no. First we must design the complete ring. And when the complete design is done, we will work on the pavé and all the details for the gemstones. But nonetheless, save and be happy. First, I'm going to create a simple profile. <laughs> and I'm going to start creating the lower part of the body of the ring. Something like this will be just fine. Now here, I'm going to create something more organic. I'm going to make it hollow to avoid useless extra weight using the new organic profile. Here we are. So we're going to create a taper curve for that part of the body so we can start tweaking the shape of the body of the ring. Now I can raise the flower to a more appropriate level. Save and be happy. Now let's continue with simple stuff. Here I need to connect. So I'm going to take this profile. I'm going to adapt it, convert it to mesh. Let's make it larger. Let's make it smoother. Now let's make a second one a bit bigger, readjust the body as needed. This gets a mirror. Check all the angles. This looks very smooth. And now we need to progress on connecting the flower with the body of the ring. So I'm going to take the borders of the flower, all of them. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to scale them so they fit above the finger. So here, let's remove uh, the modifiers. And first, I'm going to keep only the ground level of each border. And I'm going to adapt the design to make the projection on the finger a lot prettier. Now, this is the result of this process. I have the outlines of the petals. And you can notice that we have seven petals. And this makes this star an epta star. Now we can add the shrink wrap modifier. Target the finger. It's going to be a projection on the z-axis negative. And I can copy the modifiers. Now let me copy these outlines, convert them to mesh, go to edit mode, and I'm going to start extruding one millimeter on the z-axis. Now I can work with the solidify modifier, no offset, thickness 0.8. If the result is uneven, go to edit mode, bring the normals to the outside or inside depending. Now let me also add a bevel modifier and a subdivision surface, three levels. Let's go copy the modifiers to have a general view. This is pretty lovely. 
and that's the shape I now have under the flower on the finger. Obviously, as a good designer, I worked on the shape, tried several options, and this is much better. We are ready to make the connection between the flower, the body of the ring, and the inner gallery. So first, I'm going to connect the tip of the petals of the flower to the shape on the finger. To do that, I'm going to use Bezier Curves. So let's start here. Let's create a new profile. Let's bring the shape. Let's bring the gold. Let's work on the tilt. So here we are with the shape above the finger and we go to the tip of the petal. So I'm going to make these structures for each petal. Great, the connecting bridges are ready. There are five. The other petals have no space for these bridges. And now it's clearly time to connect the flower with the body of the ring. We have these gaps. And to do this, I'm going to create leaves. To create my leaves, I'm going to create a profile like this. Now I'm going to start with a busy curve and a tapper curve. So now what I can do, create a very interesting leaf shape. And that means I can now take my leaf, convert it to mesh. So the leaf is going to go at zero. I will have to scale it, create a busy curve and start filling this gap. Now we're going to use the curve modifier. So this is leaf path number one, and my leaf is going to take that path, reset the path, all transforms, set the thickness of your leaf. Now let's check the orientation of the deformation. This is pretty good and I can work with the tilt of the busy curve. Now it's all about designing the path for all the leaves and complete the connection between the flower and the body of the ring. And this is what we get, the leaves connecting the flower to the body of the ring on each side. It's important to check that the leaves are not affecting the hollow part of the ring on the inside. And from the top view, we can see that these leaves bring a very dynamic element to the design of this ring. Shapes on the side to receive some decorations. Here I'm going to create support shapes. And my goal is to link the top to the bottom. And to do that, I'm going to create a support surface. Let's add a bevel and subdivision surface to keep the precision, but make it smooth. Okay, so this is how we create the support surfaces. And now let's make the other ones. So here's the result. This is just a shell that's going to help me project my decorations. And now what about these decorations? So let's add a cube. Let's take the shell. Now I'm going to select this part. I'm going to separate it and let's go with the Displace modifier. Let's add a new texture. The texture is going to be a grayscale image. You can buy these images or create them yourself. And we're going to use the cube as an object for the coordinates right there in the Displacement modifier. Now it's all about the scale and position of this cube. Of course, we need to tweak the strength of the displacement. And let's get to work with the position and then we're going to remove what we don't need because I don't want this to be completely solid. So we're going to create that cutter. This is going to be gold. Let's start simple. Now to make the cutter, I'm going to take the same shell that I used here, that one. I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to call it cutter deco one. I'm going to remove the displacement. And now it's all about creating a solid with this shell to make a Boolean when needed. First, let's put another material so I can see better. Now this is going to need a solidify modifier. So it cuts on the inside and the outside. Let's give it some thickness. And here something very interesting is happening. I was going to use this new shell made into a solid to cut the excess of metal here from the decoration, but take into account the happy accidents during the creative process. This now looks like black enamel on the side of the ring. And I think this is much better than my first idea. We can see I have six spaces that are going to receive these type of decorations. This extra weight is going to be worth it. But let's be fair, the result is much more elegant, attractive, developed. At this level of jewelry design, the client has money. And what they want, astonishing jewelry.
and that's why we are here today. And we might even use colored enamel, of course. So that's how it looks with the enamel, without the enamel, and without the shell. So this actually was the first idea, the decoration filling the gaps on the sides of the ring. At this point, it's all about preference. Now on the technical side for the 3D modeling, I use the displace modifier to create this decoration here on the shell. There are obviously other ways to do this. You could use the lattice, the form modifier and a lattice to give the shape to the decoration. Or I could use a plane with a surface the form modifier combined with a shrink wrap modifier and bind it to my decoration. The quality of the deformation in this specific occasion was much higher using the displace modifier. That's not necessarily always the case. So this is one decoration. I have five to go. Save and be happy and let's get to work. It's also a pretty good time to have a look at the ring from the bottom view and to remember to complete the gallery. Earlier, I made the borders and the up to star, and now I've completed the connections. Having a seven pointed star is very interesting because that makes the design a lot more challenging, highly asymmetrical and much more one of a kind. It's always with a lot of joy that I complete these highly customized designs. Here now, that's how the decorations look on one side. So to complete these, we can see that this decoration is made using the displacement modifier following the steps I showed earlier. And these are busy curves with a profile helping to complete the art of these decorations. Now, don't worry, it will soon be time to make the pavé setting on the top of the flower. The decorations are done on each side. The gallery is done. The connections between the body and the flower are done. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for. First, let's turn on the snap, center, face project, align rotation to target, effect, move, and rotate. You should have something like this. The girdle of the gem standing out of the metal. Now let's start distributing the sapphires. This gem will be slightly smaller, 1.5 millimeters, and that gem will also be slightly smaller, 1.75 millimeters. Manually making your pavé technical advantages. This gem is going to be slightly bigger, 2.25 millimeters. We can see that making a pavé in Blender is very comfortable and very simple. The distribution of the gems is completed. We need prongs. Let's get started. Manually making the distribution of your prongs is a lot more flexible and is a process that you can thoroughly enjoy. Like this, you can quickly adapt the size of your prongs as needed. Don't forget to save and be happy. Also, never forget that making a pavé setting is a true art form. The prong pavé is done. Now I'm going to work on the colors and making the colors for the places of the gems. Select all the gems, make a copy, join them. These are the cutters. For the petals, add a Boolean difference from the cutters. Don't forget to check the proper result. This is the result of the cutters on all the petals. Sapphires have many colors and this is just one example. So obviously each customer will have their preferences. This was designing a high jewelry flower ring with pavé setting in Blender 4.3. My name is Damien Rohrbach. Be nice to the planet. Be nice to animals. Take care and see you soon.